So today I'm going to install the sum card on my 2022 Royal Enfield Hunter 350. It's going to go right here to cover the engine. So to begin with I ordered this from India. It's an OEM part but to get it from a distributor or from a dealer in Australia it had like a 300% upmarket was insane so I ordered from a eBay seller in India. Um, I presume he I don't know, has some way to get them directly from the uh, manufacturer in, in India and he ships them out here and it works out to be at a, th about a third of the price. So to begin with we're going to take the four rubber grommets and just insert them into the sump guard plate. It's a bit finicky, I didn't rehearse this before I actually made the video so the first one is a bit, a bit of a struggle to get in. Um, I was worried about breaking them but the um, rubber is actually pretty pliable so it didn't snap or, or break at all. Once I get the first one done, it's a uh, not a hard task. And then I uh, just went around and uh, did the other three. As you can see on my, on my uh, desk there in the uh, garage, I've got the uh, rear luggage rack, which is not an OEM part. I also have an OEM windshield that I'll be installing. Next, it's just I asked my friends which one I should install first and they said the sump card and it's probably a good idea because it's the one that's the uh, most practical and most likely to prevent damage. So that's all four of the rubber grommets in. The next thing you'll need, presuming that you've got a kit that has all this stuff in it, and it's not just the um, item itself, um, is the little metal inserts that go inside of the rubber grommets. So you should have four of these. They're sort of a, a metal cylinder piece with a, um, like a flangey bit on one end. So you just have to have them going from the outside inwards so that the metal ring is resting on the rubber grommet. these essentially when you're tightening the um, screws onto it it's going to distribute the load over the rubber from it. Got all my bit getting my bits lined up there. So so what we're going to be attacking here first is this uh, cross bolt that uh, goes through the engine at the bottom. It's just in front of the uh, center stand. So on one end will be a 17 millimeter socket, or wrench rather, and on the other end we've got a 14 millimeter socket on my ratchet. And we're just going to undo it. We're not going to take it all the way out. We're just going to undo it and give enough space for the rear sump guard mounting bracket because it sort of slides in between the uh, bolt end and the uh, bottom of the engine crankcase and between the nut and the engine crankcase. So just undo it till you have a, a nice, I don't know, three millimeter gap either side. After I'd loosened a bit, I just undid it by hand because it's a bit faster, but we don't want to remove the nut entirely. So we're going to take the rear sump guard bracket, which is the one that has these open-ended catchment pieces. And then essentially just uh, line that up on either side. And yeah, again, it's going between the, no uh, between the uh, end of the bolt and the bottom of the crankcase and between the nut, or rather the nuts and the washer and the crankcase. And then we're just going to tighten that up by hand. We don't want to tighten it with uh, tools at this stage, just tighten up by hand and uh, ensure that the uh, plate there is sort of parallel to the uh, bottom of the crankcase. And the captured nuts are there. Very, I took a little bit of time here to clean up some over corking from the um, manufacturing. On the front here, so beneath the horn and just beneath the uh, tube pieces and the, where the cradle for the classic goes, there's just these uh, block-offs that you just have to take out to reveal uh, 
a through pass for the bit of the crate case there. And then we're going to take the large bolt with our kit and we're going to be going right to left through the uh, crankcase there. But first, of course, we have to put in the bracket. So this one, you're going to have the one that has the circles that are not open-ended and uh, make sure you have the caption nut points uh, upwards. And then I'm going to slide the bolt straight through and uh, put a nut on the other end. This nut has a little crush um, ring in it, so you can't really tighten all the way by hand. So I had to, again, get a 17 millimeter uh, wrench there and then uh, get my socket again. And then I spent a little bit of time here just fiddling around and starting and thinking to myself, hmm, this isn't ratcheting very efficiently. That's a bit weird. I don't feel it's starting to ratchet very much. And so then I uh, took off the socket and I was like, hmm, is it not just 14, 17 like the other one? No, this one that came with the kit is a 13 uh, end on the bolt. Still 17 on the uh, nut at the other end, but the, uh, the bolt end is 13 millimeter. So I switched to the 13 millimeter, uh, and put it onto the socket and then just tightened it. Again, not all the way tight because I want to still have some play so I can move the bracket around so I can get it in the correct position for installing the sump guard. Again, you want it sort of parallel to the crankcase, which isn't actually entirely vertical. It's a little bit pointing outwards. Then collect from your kit. You, are, you should have four screws. Uh, in my one, they were, uh, oh, sorry, there's my sump guard. Just getting in position, maneuvering it. So four screws and my ones were hex headed or Allen, Allen keyed. didn't actually say anywhere on the screws what sizing they were but I just grabbed my ratchet screwdriver and got I think this is like a like I actually can't remember what size they had but it's the one that fits I'm sure if you have a set then you can just put it to the one that fits not that hard to, to figure out and then what we're going to do is we're going to loosely fit the sump guard essentially while the front and rear of these brackets still have play we can move them around and make sure that they conform to the to this to the uh, geometry of the sump plate so just by hand I'm loosely putting in all the uh, screws though actually I think I I do use the screwdriver a little bit just to um, just to make it a little bit faster and easier and then essentially once you've I'm not going to show it in this video but once you've put all the screws in you want to, and you've got the uh, brackets in the correct uh, positions, you just want to back out these screws, uh, tighten up the bottom uh, through bolt and the front through bolt so they're tight and the, and the uh, brackets are in place correctly. And then you probably just put a little, a little bit of Loctite on each of these screws and then go through and, and put them in with your ratchet screwdriver and make sure that they're, they're tight. Just so it's a nice permanent fix. Not that this is going to be especially with the rubber grommets, it's not going to suffer a ton of, of movement from vibration, but a little bit of Loctite or something is probably a good idea. I just did them up a little bit tighter just to, uh, so I had the final bracket location, but yeah, I'm not going to show you taking them all out and tightening the uh, spracket bolts and then re-putting on the sump guard. But that's it. That's what it looks like. And then uh, I'll come back soon with the installation of the windshield and the rear luggage rack. See you next time.